welcome to another great week on The Jet Set. Coming up on today's show, our beauty and wellness correspondent, Leah Rushlow, is back to show us how something as simple as a schedule can keep us healthy during these unusual times. Then we're revisiting the Catskills and a resort that might offer an air travel free vacation option for many looking to get away. And I'm talking to destination event expert Lauren Gretsch about what impact she sees for these types of events post quarantine. All this and more is coming up. You're watching The Jet Set. Are you ready to go? It's time to Jet Set. We have your ticket to travel, food, and fitness and everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. Travel news is about to sprout on this week's edition of Here's This, powered by TravelPulse.com. U.S. airlines had their busiest two days in the last two months this past week. Still a far cry from what the numbers were about a year ago, but a slight cause for optimism amidst the devastating effects of the coronavirus pandemic. The Transportation Security Administration says it screened more than 300,000 flyers on both May 21st and May 22nd, the first time since March 23rd that more than 300,000 people traveled through U.S. airports, according to CNN. Now, that's still far below what air travel was just a year ago when 2.6 million passengers were screened on both May 21st and May 22nd of 2019. CNN noted wow. that even with the modest gains in recent days, the percentage of people screened since the start of April amounts to only 6% of those screened a year ago. Isn't that insane? It is just the numbers coming in are just crazy. But at, this is just also a testament to the human spirit. Like people want to start moving about and start traveling again and start visiting their family and visiting their friends in a safe way. And I can see how everyone is like, just let me back out. <laughs> <laughs> me well, I think being stuck at home like adds to everyone's like wanderlust right now. Everyone's dreaming of what mm -hmm. they're gonna do when they're allowed out or when things go back to normal. And then I think uh -huh. it was just like the opportunity was there to get away. But then you look mm -hmm. at some of the video like in Ocean City, Maryland and all these other places where everyone was out by the beach and no one was social distancing, no one was wearing a mask. And it was like, well, no. as much as I want to get out, I don't know if I want to go there because I don't want to mm -hmm. be near those people. <laughs> well, it's just, again, it's so weird because there's no protocol for the, how do we do this? We don't have a, any sort of past event or any kind of precedence for, okay, if we go to the beach, how do we do this? If we right. start flying again, how do we do this? So I think everyone just needs to respect everybody else and you know take care of yourself and also take care of everyone else around you. Right. I mean, there's a lot of shaming going on right now. There's a lot of- Mask shaming. There's just a lot of stuff going on right now. So I think everyone should just take care of themselves, their loved ones, and just be cool to each other, please. I and agree. it's also summertime coming up and everyone's going to be outside more. So everyone just be cool to each other. You know, it's, yeah, it's important to remember you're not really wearing the mask for you. You're wearing it for the people around you because it mm -hmm. more stops you spreading it than you getting it. So just have mm -hmm. some, you know, take, take a little time to care about your neighbor. Just be cool. Just be cool <laughs> just to be everyone cool. else. wellness we're going to talk about schedules, schedules! <laughs> it feels like day 6924 of confusing life altering social distancing zooming google hangouts stressful time so why is keeping a schedule important for our mental and physical well-being well leia and i have the answers <laughs> leia why is a sleep schedule so important so sleep schedule your body, regardless of when your when your body likes to go to sleep, being on a schedule is imperative for you being productive every single day. So if you've never taken your chronotype, I highly recommend taking that test. Dr. Oz has one. You can Google chronotype.com and look up whether or not you're a wolf, bear, lion, or a very rare dolphin. So really by figuring out how your body responds best to sleep, how much sleep is recommended for your chronotype, that's going to put you on a path to success. Interesting. Okay, let's talk about eating schedules. Why is staying on an eating schedule so important? Well, first off, grazing through the day, I'm not a huge fan of it. Regardless of any fitness professional out there, it's really hard on our body to always be breaking down food. 
our body's a machine. So when you're taking in that food and it has to break it down, it's constantly working. If it's constantly working and you get an infection, guess who doesn't have the energy to fight the infection because it's always fighting, breaking down the food. So staying on a schedule is very, very important. I understand that. Okay, well, let's <laughs> talk about self-care. This is so important, especially during such a stressful, confusing, weird time. Why is keeping a schedule for your own self-care so important? Well, if you think about it, our homes used to be our self-care avenue. Well, now we've moved work into self-care. So if you're not on a schedule and you're constantly working 24 seven, your self-care has gone out the window. So by making an area, whether it's an office or it's a part of your house that's dedicated to your work, and then keeping that separate from your self-care areas, whether that's a bubble bath or reading in your sitting room or whatever it is, you have to schedule that time in because it's equally as important. Okay, let's move on to exercise. Why is keeping an exercise schedule important? My favorite. I know, as I'm standing here as trying to do. <laughs> if you fail to plan for exercising, just like eating or sleeping or anything else, you will not exercise. Most people think that they need to work out five days, six days a week. That's absolutely not accurate. As long as you're getting in, I say 10K a day with your steps, three times a week should be enough. It should be plenty. But if you don't plan the days that you're going to exercise, it's very easy for those days to pass you by and then for you to get to Friday and realize, oops, I forgot to work out all week again. Leia, as usual, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my boo. Where can people find more information and get more of your wonderful insights from? Obviously, LeiaR.com. They can connect with me and work with me one-on-one -on -one for health coaching. Uh, but if they're interested in the plant-based lifestyle, they can also find me with Evolution Vegan Journey. And we work internationally with people on how to get their best body and best life. This week's travel flashback is taking us out to the Catskills, and it's coming up after just a quick break. You're watching The Jet Set. For many, escaping our home quarantine while still staying safe is at the top of our minds. This week's travel flashback takes us out to the Catskills, a destination that is accessible by car for many, letting us avoid the risk of air travel and is full of great things to see and do. Take a look. So I am so excited to be here at Resorts World Casino in the Catskills. Tell me a little bit about how all of this came to be. The uh, five-star product from the uh, luxury that you will find in the accommodations throughout the casino floor. It's as, beautiful. Just it walking is. in, it is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. And uh, all of our food and beverage venues and the entire service experience that we are looking to provide, it's really going to um, attract um, our clientele and bring it here to the Catskills for something that's new, unique, something that's really going to um, appeal to your senses. Oh, I can't wait. So you have the gaming floor, yes. and then tell me a little bit about the restaurants that are here mm -hmm. on site, because I heard there are some amazing choices sure. for me. So what do you have? Well, so let's start with the Lotus, mm -hmm. which is our um, Asian style, but typical Asian style in a way that it's um, that you're not going to find it any place else. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, our kitchen staff um, need translators from time to time. <laughs> That's fantastic because then you know you're getting the authentic food. Absolutely. And then uh, we merge over to Chalaya, which is our Italian steakhouse. Oh, amazing. I don't know if you had the experience to go there, but I'll tell you it's one of a kind as well. A wine selection that you're not going to find any place else. Wonderful. At least not outside of New York City in mm -hmm. such a short drive. Great restaurant, amazing Absolutely. wine list. Spa, live music and casino and just having an amazing experience with wonderful hospitality. Well, I'm ready to go check in. Will you show me to my room? My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Marcio. You. Thank you so much. The standard rooms were beautiful with big bathrooms and comfy beds. But once I heard they had special themed high roller suites for VIPs, well, I had to go check those out. Okay, Matt, this room, this is absolutely beautiful. Where are we now? We are in room 350 in the wine room. True gem. 
Okay, so all rooms here have different themes to them. Yes, yeah, so all the villas will have a special theme and you'll see how they encompass that theme in a variety of ways, including even the smell as you walk in the room, it that fresh, amazing. beautifulness. Yes. So you have a wine room, you have a game room that mm -hmm. I think has a pool table. What are some other we have themes a, of rooms We have a theater have? room, which is nice. It has a massive 80 inch television screen. You know, yeah. special remotes and features and controls so you don't have to leave the couch ever and you have everything <laughs> at your fingertips. A lot of fun stuff like that. That's a great room, like for the Super Bowl or exactly. for big games or big fights to come in and bring all your friends and have those rooms. There really is something for everyone. And, and that's why they decided to go with the themes the way they did because it really just brings in a really nice eclectic crowd of people. So let's talk about the VIP services that yes. are available here because you guys have some really outstanding amenities for VIPs, starting with the heliport. Oh, absolutely. That yes. I heard is only a 20 minute helicopter ride from a place called New York City. Yeah. And you could be here like just that. Just a drop in a, drop in a bucket, yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes from takeoff to landing and you can be at our helipad, which is right behind the building. So they're whisked to their beautiful room. Excellent. But you guys also really kind of cater to your guests likes like Absolutely. what kind of drinks they like what is their food preferences the idea is we don't want them to think once that's really <laughs> what it is we want to have it for them if it's a special bottle of wine as we were in the wine room yes. that, that we can only find it's mm -hmm. going to be on the table with decanters and wine glasses before they even walk in the room and we'll be ready to pop the cork for them and pour it this is so beautiful here. We're at the Bethel Woods Center for the Arts. Yep. Tell me a little bit about what is going on here because I know that right down the hill is where the original Woodstock concert happened almost 50 years ago. So That's tell right. me now what you guys do here. We have a uh, full cultural center. <laughs> we have concerts, education programs, a museum, and a really large historic site. That's amazing. So you got, there is actually an exhibit from Woodstock here yeah. as well. It's a great exhibit that puts the whole Woodstock Festival into the context of the 1960s. You know, without talking about the 1960s, mm -hmm. it's basically just a story of three days in the mud. <laughs> and Woodstock was a lot more than that. <laughs> so we try to put people in that era. Look at this, this is cool. Welcome to Woodstock. Whoa. So here's one of our films, and we've got uh, clips from the film clips from the concert mm -hmm. of the performers, interspersed with historical footage. Again, that context is everything. What were young people going through in 1969, and how was Woodstock a reflection of their world, a reflection of their hopes and dreams? So what, are, what are these pictures? Uh, these are pictures of some of the oral history people. that we, uh, they, they were attendees, and, and uh, there's Richie Havens, he opened the festival. Uh, Wavy Gravy, he was the head of the Hog Farm Commune. <laughs> but these were people uh, that were related to Woodstock in the day, and we got their stories. And that's how we got a lot of the stories from the museum, mm -hmm. by interviewing people who were there. And a lot of our exhibit is first person. <laughs> now that we're familiar with the 60s, mm -hmm. it's time to immerse ourselves in those three days of Woodstock. The guys who created the festival, why it happened here instead of in Woodstock. Of course, there's a story right what there. What is that story? Woodstock was a bohemian community all through the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Artists and musicians, uh, potters, all of that, they, they lived there and it was sort of away from off the grid. Uh -huh. And um, one of the promoters lived in Woodstock and this realized there's no recording studio here. I want to build a recording studio to attract Bob Dylan and Richie Havens and all mm -hmm. those folks that were living there. They thought we would throw a concert to raise money for this, <laughs> invite all the local musicians. They got kicked out of Wallkill. 30 days before the concert was supposed to no happen way. in mid-August. They had 30 days to find another location. And just by chance, the very next day, they went to Bethel. Um, someone suggested they check out some property here. Mm -hmm. They found this field that was just phenomenally wonderful. They said, we'll take it. Uh, they made a negotiation with uh, Max Yasker, the dairy farmer who mm -hmm. owned the land. Uh, $50,000, okay, you can use my property for a month. <laughs> and the rest is history. Lauren Gretsch is joining us after a quick break. You won't want to miss it. We've all had to put our plans on hold, but few events in life are more challenging than to reschedule a wedding. I sat down with Lauren Gretsch from LLG Events to get her take on what direction she sees the industry moving to as we try to resume big events. So, Lauren, you are 
the founder of LLG Events. What is that? Tell, tell me what that is. So LLG Events is a luxury wedding planning company that specializes in destination weddings. So we specialize in luxury weddings, destination weddings, and even New York City as a destination. So if you're from San Francisco, if you're from Washington, D.C., you or your, spa, your partner is or their family, we know how to specialize in logistics for people coming into New York. So I have always branded myself as a destination wedding planner, whether it's New York City or anywhere in the world. That's like, that's what LLG Events is. Let's talk about kind of where we are right now because we're both at home. Our, our passports are both gathering a little dust. So <laughs> dealing with a lot of wedding postponements and a lot of new kind of nation wedding industry right now. There's a lot of postponing, postponing, but also like the fact that everyone is still interested, but maybe just like a different way. Yeah. I, I mean, for right, right now, I, most people want to have a destination wedding. That is, that is what it even is the most talked about discussion, even in our industry in the event community is how are we going to make these destination weddings possible again? And I think that right now we're pushing everybody into 2021. Mm -hmm. We're even some of the people that were for June, July, August, we moved them to next year because mm -hmm. I think we just need a little bit of time as a, as a community to figure out, okay, which destination should we go back to first? Mm -hmm. So. I think the way we approach destination weddings might need to change a little bit. Maybe if it's outdoors, we need to make certain concessions. But I think right now as a whole, every, every couple wants a destination wedding. And as a community, we're trying to find solutions to be able to, to put them back and have, and we're being able to have a wedding wherever they want. Do you know, right before coronavirus, there was a study that came out and the number one place that was trending for destination weddings was Scotland. I believe it. And yeah. I was shocked. I was shocked to see that because it was, at, you know, you would expect Italy to be number one, France, but no, Scotland took the number one spot. So I, maybe there's something there. Have you been there before? No, I have not. Oh, Lauren. I've been to Ireland. I've been to England. I have mm -hmm. never been to Scotland. Put it on your list because Scotland also is one of those magical places that you can, it's like the electricity is tangible. You can feel that this is like a different place. The history of Scotland, how people are very proud to be Scottish. I always find it fascinating when you go to a different place and everyone is so proud of, I am Scottish. I am Japanese or Tanzanian or Estonian or wherever. I've been to so many places that I love that. Yes. And they preserve their culture, right? They hand it and they pass it down and they, and they cradle it with care and they make sure that, you know, we, we, we preserve these ideas and we preserve these, these customs so that we make sure to sustain and be, live beyond our ancestors. And I think that that's so incredible that they're, the ancient cultures of the world have done that and preserved it so, so well. And, and, and I love it. And especially that one is one of them. Where else do you see kind of the destination and honeymoon? Where is the honeymoon situation going to, you think? That is so interesting. I, you know, so many people were going to Europe. I think Africa, I think Africa had a huge surge after the fall last year. A lot of my clients were going to South Africa, doing safaris, Cape mm -hmm. Town. Um, but now I would say even more so. And also I feel like everyone's kind of taking a big, like pump the brakes on big weddings right now and big honeymoons. So this is kind of like, I feel like we're talking more into like December of this year and then maybe into 2021 how everything will kind of be such a a surge in traveling where else is kind of like on your radar like for me it's Iceland New Zealand and Japan I just Iceland, those Japan. are like I'm just dying to go to all those places what about you Hunter, I love New Zealand. I've been there and I felt, I said to Paul the other day, I'm like, we have to go back. It was one place that we didn't spend enough time in. And I actually see those types of places also making a surge in some honeymoons because you don't need a hotel. You can rent an RV and you could just drive the coast and you could pause and stop wherever you want and just sleep outside. And I actually think that that 
was so and listen to cool music. Yeah. Where can people find more information about you, my darling? Oh, well, I actually started a website, so it's laurenbeck.com. Instagram I like, but I feel like you only get a very small amount of the person on Instagram. And I, in order for people to really, I think, trust and understand that what, what we, what we're doing and who we are, we, I want to talk about it on a, on a bigger level, on a bigger forum. It's always great having Lauren on the show. Well, it's time for one final break. We'll be right back with more of the Jet Set. After seeing posts and stories of hundreds of Americans using their creativity to give back and learning that almost three quarters of their customer network were interested in making supplies to help, Michaels has set out to celebrate these makers and encourage others to join by sharing the stories of those who are giving back. Michaels is recognizing crafters who are creating for the greater good during COVID-19 by featuring them in a new campaign called Hashtag Difference Makers, launched as a month-long initiative. I was so honored to be a part of the Michaels campaign. I think... Right now, we're all latching on to these good news stories of, you know, people really making a difference in their own creative way. And to be included in that group was just really unexpected and humbling. And yeah, I'm honored to be a part of it and be in such good company with people that are making a difference. Michaels has also donated $1 million worth of fabric, enough to make nearly 750,000 masks to more than 70 organizations. The donations of elastic and fabric. I mean, this is how we keep our sewers going. I mean, we were sewing around the clock and without the supplies, the cost of supplies, we wouldn't be able to, to be as successful as we have been. Throughout May, nominate a Difference Maker by sharing their story on Facebook or Instagram and using the hashtag Difference Makers, as well as tagging at Michaels Stores or by visiting michaels.com slash Difference Makers. Follow up between the episodes by following us on Facebook at The Jet Set, and we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye, everybody. Bye.